Hi everybody! Today we're going to start reading our first short story in our short story unit, Bad Blood. We did a Google Slide presentation on Friday introducing the story, so we are going to start reading it today. I will be stopping periodically to break down and discuss some things that I think you guys should know. I hope I answer questions while we do that, but if I do not answer questions that you may have, please email or message me on Schoology um, so we I can help you answer those questions about the story. So let's go ahead and get started. Bad Blood by Will Weaver. From his family of thieves and con artists, Jared has learned well, but does he have the patience as well as the talent to make the big score from the old lady who lives alone at the edge of town? I knocked on the door, waited. Inside the farmhouse, I heard a radio go quiet, then shuffling sounds. I had a good feeling about this place. It was set well off the road, and the only and the old lady appeared to live alone. She opened the door part way. Yes? Her voice was thin and croaky from lack of use. Good morning, ma'am, I chirped. My name's Jared Rigetti, and I'm looking for summer work. Painting, lawn mowing, odd jobs. One good thing about being an undersized 16-year-old is that I can pass for 13. I tried to see beyond her into the house. No, nothing for you, she said. Step back and step back from the screen door. The shades were half drawn. What is it with old people in daylight? So I couldn't see much. However, it smelled like an old person's house. Stale, fruity, soggy tea bags, flowers, cats, all of it mixed together like the odor of old carpet. Okay, ma'am, I said. I flashed on my winning smile, learned from my old man. Sorry to bother you. I headed down her path, her porch steps, and pedaled off with my lawnmower in tow. Except that I only went a short way before turning back. What is it now, she said. She was still at the screen door. I told you I have no work for you. I understand, ma'am, I said, but I'm in the Boy Scouts, and we get pins for doing volunteer work. I'm wondering if you'd mind if I mowed your lawn for free? It won't take me long. It's part of the Boy Scout oath to do volunteer work. She was silent, then cleared her throat with a raspy sound. Okay, but just the front part. Thank you, ma'am, I said and saluted. Boy Scouts, ha! I started up my mower, felt, and I felt her gaze on me. So let's go ahead and stop there for just a second and kind of talk about um, our main character, Jared. So our story is told in Jared's point of view, so we get exactly what Jared is thinking about himself and everybody else, which is important. Um, because I, as I told you in our Google Slide presentation on Friday, Jared is going to experience a lot of inner conflict which is where he has mixed emotions and feelings about things, and he's kind of fighting with himself. And we're going to really get a feel for that as he is telling his story. So moving on from that, um, we know that Jared has been watching this farmhouse um, and knows that this old lady lives alone. We also know that Jared is lying about some things. So we know that he lies about his age, um, and he says... Right here. One good thing about being an undersized 16 year old is that you can pass for 13. So he's lying about how old he is because he can play it off that way because he looks younger. And we know that he's lying about the Boy Scouts because on the second page he says Boy Scouts. Ha! So I want to ask you guys a question about why he would lie about being in the Boy Scouts. And I know obviously um, you can't answer that question to me directly. So I just want to give you a second to think about it. And then um, I'm going to hopefully help you answer that as we continue reading. Um, so go ahead and think about that for just a second. Why would he lie about wanting to be in the Boy Scouts? Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about that then. So Boy Scouts are an organization where young men can volunteer um, within their community to do work to help make their community better. So whether that be selling popcorn to raise money, um, helping people that may need it around their house, um, maybe helping schools. We don't know, right? What If you're in the Boy Scouts, let me know so we can get some more information. But we do, what we do know, generally speaking, is that Boy Scouts um, are, are to help men, young men become leaders. And so they are generally trusted in their communities. So Jared's lying about his age, and he's lying about being in the Boy Scouts because he knows that that's going to get the trust from this old woman, who very obviously is skeptical of Jared. Um, because before he even mentions being in the Boy Scouts, she automatically refuses to let him 
do any work around her house, which is important, right? So he knows that if he can lie and get her to trust him, then he can do whatever he's going to as far as what his interest is in her and this farmhouse. And we'll see what that is later. So he lies to gain her trust and it works, right? She says, okay, you can mow my lawn, but only this part of it. So he has an in and that's it. That's important. So let's continue. When I began to move back and forth across the shaggy lawn, her white head peeped from behind the window. Her fuzzy white hair looked like the dandelion seeing globes that my mower scattered in the wind. I had spotted this place when my family first landed in this lame, white bread Ohio town. I almost said Iowa. We moved around so much, sometimes I forget where we are. Anyway, I was riding my bike, casing the town, which I had to admit looked perfect for us. My father was a genius, choosing a place like places such as Oakville, population 7,500. Here people left their car windows open, left their garage doors up in the daytime, and left their kids' bikes lying on lawns. It was one of those little towns that the real world hadn't caught up to yet, a petty thief's dream. Trouble was, my father had jumped into me that we were not petty thieves. Thieves, all right, but not small timers. The dollar bill is lying on the table, and all you got to do is reach over and pick it up, but it's not the dollar bill you want or the ten spot, or even the whole wallet. Set your sights higher, son. But stealing was in my blood. I didn't see a woman shopping. I saw her purse loosely slung over her shoulder. I didn't see a man walking down the street. I saw his wallet peeking from his hip pocket. I didn't see a photographer shooting a sundown scene. I saw his camera bag unattended. It was genetic. Anyway, back to the old lady. The first week I was here, I had ridden all the way to the city limits and a little beyond, which was scary. All that open space, all those cornfields with tall, tight, shadowy rows. My parents had warned me about Midwestern cornfields, about kids getting lost in them and never found. Big fields and open horizons gave me the creeps. Give me honking taxis and narrow streets any day. Also, probably genetic. So, just as I was about to pedal like mad back to town, I saw a narrow driveway and beyond, back off the road at least a block, an old white farmhouse. Saggy barn tall hay shed, along with various cribs and coops, and a lawn in major need of mowing. Elmer A. Anderson, the mailbox read. Even as I looked, a little white-haired lady shuffled onto her porch to water some of her flowers in a window box. I sank low in the ditch so she wouldn't see me, and I watched her for quite a while. I got the feeling there was no Elmer around. At age 16, I already had a nose for lonely old widows. Sometimes I amazed and disgusted myself at the same time. Today, when I finished mowing, I rattled my mower back to my bike. On Mrs. Anderson's porch steps stood a tall glass of iced tea. I wouldn't feel right without giving you something for your trouble, she said from behind the screen. Okay, so Jared's mowing this lawn, um, and we find out that he is new to town. And we are in Oakville, Ohio. Um, and we learn, too, that he moves around a lot. That his, and that his father purposefully picks these small towns out because these people are so trusting, right? Um, I'm trying to think if there's any small towns around here that would be an example of this. But you have to understand that these people, nothing really happens. There isn't any crime. So they feel safe leaving their doors unlocked, their windows open. Um, bikes lying around on lawns, right? Um, but maybe in, in larger cities that we're used to, like Valpo and um, Portage, where I'm from, um, it's not necessarily safe to do those things because there are a lot of people in town and that would give them ample opportunity to steal from us. But these people don't know that because they haven't had any experience with it, so they feel okay leaving that stuff unattended to which gives people like Jared and his parents an opportunity to steal from them. Um, but Jared's dad is not like that, right? He doesn't want just the dollar bill or even the $10 bill or even the whole wallet. He wants going for the gold. He wants their entire life savings. And so, which leads them to having move around a lot because they don't want to get caught by the police. Um, so this is important, right? We have a little insight into Jared's family, what kind of person his dad is, and the types of um, lessons that he is teaching Jared. And this leads into how Jared sees himself. And I told you some of the themes you were going to be looking at were good versus evil and nature versus nurture. 
And this is um, indicated very clearly in a couple of different places that I want to point out to you all. So the first one is, but stealing was in my blood. The second is, it was genetic. And the last one is, at age 16, I had already learned or already had a nose for lonely old widows. Sometimes I amazed and disgusted myself at the same time. So um, the first two, but stealing was in my blood and it, it was genetic, I are kind of a callback to our story's title, which is Bad Blood. And I told you in our Google slide presentation on Friday that bad blood was an idiom. And in this case, it means um, that you are born bad or you come from a family of bad people, which in Jared's case is true, right? And he totally believes that as well because he even states himself that stealing was in his blood and that it was genetic, that he couldn't get away from it, right? He was just born this way, born to see um, people who were weak and vulnerable that he could steal from because that's how his family was. Um, but he also, we get an insight into him kind of having these mixed emotions about it, right? Because he sits down at the bottom. Sometimes I am amazed and disgusted by myself at the same time. So we know that he feels that he can't change because it's genetic and it's in his blood. He was born bad. But he also knows that what he's doing is bad. And it kind of bothers him that, it, that this happens to him. So I want you to keep that in mind, that he's warring with himself over this this stuff about stealing, about having a nose for stealing, right? That's important, and I want you to keep a hold of that. So we know that they he's just moved to this new town and that he was looking at watching this old lady's house, right? He was casing her house, getting information to see if she could be an easy target for him. And he learns that she is, right? Because she lives in this old house by herself. So there's nobody there to look after her. So Jared decides that she's going to be his main target. And that's where we get to him mowing the lawn, excuse me, and posing as um, the Boy Scout. Um, I think we're going to stop it there. I do want you guys to make sure that you go back to Schoology and find um, the assignment for today. I think it's one, just one question that you need to answer. You should post your answer in the um, assignment submission space that I posted for you. Also, please make sure that your vocab words are in by Tuesday, um, and I will post as well the, the definitions that I want you to have. So if you need to make adjustments, please do that on Tuesday, and we will talk about that more obviously tomorrow on Tuesday. Um, and if you have any questions about what we've read so far, please message or email me. That's all I have for you guys. Thank you.